the recording is in progress. Uh, this is Andrew Williams Jr. I'm actually broadcasting from Los, Los Angeles, California. I'm actually at Five Points Youth Foundation, uh, 1820 West Florence Avenue. In the background, you may be able to see uh, the mural here that we have created as part of our beautification project. We're only a few blocks away from where the 1992 civil unrest unfolded at Normandy and Western. We moved here later that year to make sure the community had a place where they could have safe passage for the community, but also provide business and economic development solutions. But I'm broadcasting on the internet through our Ayakba Network Facebook group, and that is a combination of what began as the Encounter Think Tank here in Los Angeles back in 2012. Many of the people on this call are actually stakeholders in that organization, but I'm Andrew Williams Jr. This has actually been uh, we're approaching the sixth anniversary of the founding of the United Nations in 2016, uh, July 17th, it launched. Uh, Brad Carson asked me to fulfill my function as a zero time solution facilitator with that. Uh, the following year, we had a one year anniversary at the Vermont Community Center of the Church of Scientology, where we had 3,000 people to come in 2016. And then we, Remus Mohammed and I, uh, celebrated again at the Vermont Community Center. Remus is here with us as well. So with that, I'm going to uh, briefly allow you, Remus, to take the first introductory one minute to introduce yourself, and then we'll go through the people here, and then we'll end up with Jackie Badeo with her presentation, and we'll take it from there. Remus Mohammed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you for pulling this together. I don't think anybody else could have, history will say. So thank you for all that you do. Uh, my name is Remus Mohammed with the Nation of Islam for 27 years now. Um, Andrew and I did um, do the second annual anniversary. Good to see Dr. Shima was here today. Um, we definitely were involved with Brother Khalid, Dr. Khalid Shaw and many others to put an anniversary because we understood when we were working on staff up there in Inglewood that it needed to be an ongoing element. It was too big of an event where 3,000 people came together to not do something in memory of that and to build upon that. And so. Uh, here we are again. So I'm so grateful, thankful. I have a business called Sweet Excursions. My whole thing is basic study manual, um, which Church Scientology uh, has as a program. I think that is the glue that really the clarity about distribution. I believe it starts with that foundation, rudimentary foundation that we can go hard across the board and watch it everywhere else, Missouri. And that'll be a stable piece of data while all these other intricate pieces continue to come together. I'm excited. Um, I think that hasn't been tried yet. And I do believe that that's going to bring a stable piece of data into all these conversations. And um, that's where I'll leave it for now. I think thank, you so thank, right, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brad Carson, you were one of the first here. You, so let's go with it, Brad. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's good seeing everybody. I'm Brad Carson, the president of United Hood Nation. Thanks for uh, calling this meeting, uh, um, <clears throat> Andrew Williams Jr. Uh, we all have been meeting for a uh, in various capacities and in various under various hats uh, on this call for many many years now. Uh, from my point of view, we all agree that uh, we need VCAP virtual community action planning by the uh, uh, famous uh, Michael Riddler. Uh, so uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, manifesting uh, all of our dreams and hopes for in this uh, such a time as this and this as uh, uh, one friend of mine would say in this Kairos moment. Uh, you want me to pass it? Uh, uh, I'll pass it on to uh, 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 Brittany Carson. I'm Brittany Carson, I'm the daughter of Brad Carson and the chair of the Job Creation and Economic Development uh, Council. Uh, and um, so looking forward to all of this work. Um, this Justice 40 is a great opportunity economically um, for our people. So um, if we can create a, a, a plan, a pipeline of how we're going to capture and basically put our people in the best um, place to basically reap the benefits. I'm all for it. Bye. 
Oh, and I'll pass it on to let's go, General Gray. Yeah, General Bright texted me. He said he had to step away for a minute. He's here, but he'll be back. He had to take care of something. So, okay, then Dr. Shima, you're up. Good afternoon, Mark, again. Thank you so much for uh, putting this meeting together. As some of you may know, and some of you may not know, I am the uh, vice president, I guess, with the United States Nation. And we're so excited to be a part of this collaboration. And I just want to listen and uh, any way that I can help to ensure that we get the best results from the work that we have all done and that we are doing. Uh, I'm in and I'm just here to assist in any way that I can. Thank you so much, Brittany, Brad, Venus, everyone that's on the line, my good friend, Jackie. Okay, turn it back. Well, Jackie, it looks as though you're up. Wait, wait can we get Kenneth to talk oh, about Kenneth. Why, why he's here and what he hopes to have happen? Oh yeah, apologize, I didn't see you there, Kenneth. Welcome. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Wyrick, Los Angeles, Caltech Net and Tutortronics, uh, the Weekend Foundation president, and um, working a lot on GIS and actually VCAP. I've been really going through a lot with that and and wanting to stay open and work with as many different groups. We're the organization of organizations. And there's the broadband initiative that is utmost along with, oh, and I'm on the board of the Allensworth Foundation as well, up in Colonel, out the town of Colonel Allensworth. And that's just, we just received money in the budget, the state budget to um, actually develop an entire center there. And so the social justice 40, Michael just kind of gave me the overview on that two pager encompasses so many of the different things that I'm working on. And so I'm here because Michael invited me and otherwise I wouldn't have even known about the meeting, but I'm here to help and, and promote education as the primary, like Remus has said. In fact, I was real pleased to have a conversation with him and Queen Teresa about what he's doing in his part. So my hat's off to you. Thank you. I don't know who to pass it to. Yeah, I think Jackie, Jack is going to kind of walk us through like what she sees and what's happening in Watts. And again, I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. I really would like to carry the Watts brand into the national narrative because I really think the test bed is Watts. And I, you know, I've been back and forth across the United States. I've been in many, many of the housing communities. I just think it, it's very advanced the vision, but I think the methodology is a little bit, needs some help. So I'm going to pass it to Jackie. Yes, good afternoon. It's 222 on the dot. I'm a numbers person. And I believe this is a, um, a very powerful um, time for us to be meeting now. It's very important. And um, I'd like to leave this meeting with us all being empowered and having a sense of direction and a framework. I just would like to thank um, this particular group. I know that you've been working on um, all of these things for so many years. And I personally do not want to see all of that effort and energy be in vain. And so we're speaking justice 40, you know, and what we always have to remember with anything that we do is that there's always a past that explains the present. As we move into the future, we have to always consider it so we can be sustainable and 
all these words that we use that has become jargon. And so in terms of Watts um, or myself, right, Jacqueline Badejo, please forgive me, um, Watts Clean Air and Energy Committee, and also um, the executive director for Watskanda. Um, Watskanda, what it means is water, air, transportation, telecommunications and sustainability, connecting agriculture and natural resources in a demonstration of alliance. And so that's kind of like what we're doing now. How do we all align to make sure that um, when we move forward, it's a demonstration, want to be reckoned with, with want to be, um, you know, carried through um, because we all are special matters experts in our areas of focus. And um, I just thank you again. And so with Watts Conda, what we have is Watts Clean Air and Energy Committee, um, which is a, a community a environmental justice group out of Watts since um, 2014. And so this is the logo. I just want us to kind of like take a look, you know, um, you know, at the top, it's like, well, for me, I see many things like railroad tracks. I see the sun, you know, um, energy. I see the tree, which is a plant, you know, it's a, a source of life. It needs what we all need, the basics, water, which is below that. And then I also put um, two characters, a, a male and a female, uh, you know, let's just say they represent community, community members with their working hats on and- Excuse me, uh, Jackie. Uh, your, your 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 screen is not moving. Is you just want to see if one we see Watts Clean Air and Energy. That's it. Oh, so yes. Um, it's just I'm speaking of the um, logo right now. Okay. That's it. I didn't come with a formal presentation. A lot of information that we have, a lot of us already know. We can plug some things in the chat. I wasn't prepared for um, this extent, and so. Um, but I thank you for the opportunity. And what um, I'm just trying to sum up is, it's just time that we get back to the basics because there is a past that, um, you know, for today's time is an oppressive system that does not allow us to reach our full potential. And it's controlled by the air. You know, we're being taxed to breathe the air that we breathe. We're in lower um, economic environment, so we have poor quality of air. Um, you know, it's, it's taxed all across the board, you know, from a global perspective. You know, it came from somewhere and they marked their taxes up. So we're continuously being taxed at different levels. Um, you know, it's taxing to be American born and, you know, you do not have housing. You do not have essentials in life. Um, it's taxing to be a parent and you have a system that is designed or that exists and you are separated from your, your children, from your family, from the source of love, um, from your inception. And so we have all these things going on. And when we consider a community as Watts, which is now a 2.1 square mile radius, community in the jurisdiction of Los Angeles County with an unincorporated county um, jurisdiction as well, then that, what that brings in is, you know, um, I'll say legislation, rules, regulations, and hopefully some enforcement. And where we have been falling short, because like what Brother Remus was mentioning, the, um, the, the tools, I would say, for the community to become educated and to gain that skill so they can um, activate those skills and be fulfilled in them, then we are left with um, what I would say um, situations in our, our, our climate where we have gentrification. And so how I would just like to frame this from the beginning is that when we do not have site control as a community, then there is no community. So getting back to the basics, how do we bring the community together? And so I would just like to kind of do a quick review of our efforts so far as Watts Clean Air and Energy Committee. Um, and with this, oh man, it's been since 2014. And as Mr. Windler said um, in our meeting earlier with Watts Clean Air, we've been, we had many different um, approaches and opportunities where we gave them what was needed, the information, the, the, we gave them VCAP, you know, to consider at a most basic level, you know, 
It's all about who owns the land, what's above and below that land, the utilities, because it's a war of utilities going on right now. That's why we've been having such a struggle. Um, and so it's back to the programming for us as community members, what type of programs that we implement when we have these um, various opportunities such as Justice 40 um, and so forth. You know, the, the infrastructure bill, we know the infrastructure is something that's very important and that needs to um, be improved and like strengthened. But if we're not strengthened as a community and have a plan, then those things are not for us, it's for the communities that they're trying to create. And so um, when it comes to Watts Rising, um, I believe now, ooh, 2017, about 2018, Watts mm -hmm. Rising about, but then also um, the other things to overlay across everything else is the pandemic. So what we have are many times that we have been in conversation with the housing authority of the city of Los Angeles, um, with me and Mr. Rindler, um, what we ended up doing, I sent a letter. At the time, I was the chair of the Watts Neighborhood Council. We sent the letter to the state of California, the Strategic Growth Council, who is the funder of the TCC grant that HACLA was funded called the Watts Rising, um, $35 million. Um, you know, to improve the quality of life, um, you know, through the improve the air, through the trees, planting trees and other projects. But what has ended up happening over a course of time is um, the realities. Homelessness is an issue. Um, the economy is failing. We're amidst a pandemic. And so I would say that served as a blanket um, you know, to blind people in those stressed out times to see what was really happening. And what we had was gentrification just knocking on the door. We already know that certain um, people who run the organization has, you know, this is their track record. And so, and we already know what happens when an A-line comes to a community. And so when an A-line comes, you know, gentrification is here, it's peaking. We know that once those registers at the new shopping center were um, in over, I don't know, 50 or 100 years or so, um, it was the first time a street was extended. Century Boulevard was extended all the way to Alameda. Um, but we also know um, when those cash registers start, you know, clinking in that money, the crime, it did increase because what we also saw was the community being displaced, stressed out in. Um, you know, oppressed in ways, especially in terms of public safety, um, public health, um, there's still contamination there in um, the Jordan Downs and everywhere. And uh, we have now um, proof that poor air quality leads to mental health illness and also that lead and all the other um, um, VOCs, um, all these compounds that lead to poor health and you know, we say all oh, those people in Watts are crazy, but it's a history. You know, we had, it was industrial. You know, we were an agricultural community, but it became, you know, industrious. We had that Alameda corridor, we had gas stations, I mean, different oil companies and, you know, Hackler being the landowners, they won the lawsuit, but they were supposed to reinvest into the community, but they, they used that as um, investing in their land more so than the people, then that's when we had the gang injunction come in, displacing people, especially those people who were community leaders, who were trying to improve the quality of life. Um, they were the ones who were targeted and displaced out of the community as well. And so all of these systems, all these things going on, um, you know, it's like at the end of the day, um, what is important? What was important is to notice that one, um, it's very hard to be autonomous <laughs> in these systems. Um, and so that's why it's important for community to come together such as this group today. Um, with the Watts Rising project, you have um, what 20 plus projects, which not only um, plants trees, but changes its, its capital projects. And when you have capital projects and <laughs> you experience seeing dioocracy where 
you know, the community shows up and they have poor systems developed to um, collect what is the community's input. And even the community is not clear on what they're voting on or putting these dots next to. We have, it's like Houston, we have a problem. And so workforce development and a, a change in economy, um, the redevelopment of the Jordan Downs, over a billion plus dollars coming into this 0.1 square mile radius. And so with that, um, we have been experiencing where what the jobs that were promised, um, it has not been fulfilled. And so when you address these issues, they tell you, you know, you're asking too many questions. And um, I propose um, communication plans and things even before um, some of these grants were approved by the state. And me and Mr. Rindler spoke with the state after I sent the letter to everyone in the office minus their public counsel. And still we're at ground zero. And I'll just kind of like to leave it there and really pass it to Mr. Rindler to kind of refocus because I have been speaking. Yeah, thank you so much, Jackie, for you know going through that. So um, yeah, what I would like to do is just share my screen for one minute and kind of get to the nuts and bolts of, of what we're what we're trying to do here in this Justice Florida. And if you haven't seen the flyer, you know, especially the people that might be on the Facebook or in the recording, um, the premise of it is that we need to have place, which is the the image on the right, the conscience of Justice Florida. We need to have a place in the community where people can come see what's going on. And we can call it an envision center, we can call it an innovation center, we can call it a community center, but inside of that space, we need to be able to know what's going on spatially inside of our community because all of this money is targeted to place-based decision-making. And so this money's earmarked specifically for the community and the buzzword is benefit. And benefit is a complex word but you know we're basically saying benefit means right there how do we make sure this money really benefits communities as promised and so this vcap virtual community action planning is a methodology of engagement and so these are work products that the students was on the news in kansas city actually made and so this idea of building ecological village, building ecological city um, was demonstrated and brought to the state of California twice. First, the Strategic Growth Council, and then subsequently to the California Energy Commission to really talk to them about, you know, what is the strategy to decarbonize? What is the strategy to get participation? And that's why, for me, if all of these cities need to conduct this process, then what is best practice and what does best practice look like? And so we've been, you know, falling to deaf ears in all these different locations. So I was hoping today we could have some conversation and some strategy about how the Church of Scientology and the United Hood Nation, um, Tony Mohammed. Elijah Farrakhan could actually, you know, really get behind this vision of what is the real potential of our population. And that, and to me, that is why I joined General Bray and this other group, VAG, Veterans Affinity Group, because they're tasked to do the, the idea of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And the reason for that is because they know that those are the, the, the more high paying career pathways. And so these this work that we're doing, you can see in the top there, Steam Village has proven the youth can do it. That's happening in the middle of America, Kansas City, on the, on the East Coast, Stafford, Virginia. We've been uh, working with them for over two years now with their, uh, they call it a test bed. And the idea that, you know, how are we going to be able to add this many people inside of our community? And we want to get the students, the youth, to actually solve the problem. And the, 
the image down on the lower right is this 15 year old girl on the news explaining how to do a healthcare clinic. And it's a really complex problem and she's right in the middle of it. And so the, the population doesn't really get included in how to solve these really complex problems. Because as Jackie was pointing out, the solution's already done for someone else. And so it's not genuine to the mission. And so then the, the two maps that are shown there get into the more deep conversation about how do you add a million people into the Los Angeles basin and, and make it sustainable rather than just dog eat dog. And, and that has to do with a more analytic process. So we have E7 Studio of Nesby, National Society of Black Engineers, Strategic Partner, the Future Kings is a nonprofit kind of enrichment center in Virginia, a steam village, and we're doing some work now in Las Vegas. But really the work we've done already in Watts and our team. So this team, we can call it Encounter LA, we can call it Watts Clean Air and Energy, we can call it United Hood Nation. The team approach over this long duration, as Jackie pointed out, needs to be brought forward and that's where Ramos and Andrew have been you know so kind to put their time in to making sure the record is kept it's visually documented and then we can show the history of the effort and um, for those who know me I have you know a big extensive email trail of all the doors that have been knocked on all the correspondence that have been made all the outreach. And what I can tell you is that this, the, what I call the Underground Railroad has now gotten all the way into Washington, D.C., into the White House. And so the, the work is not in vain. It's, it, it's just, as, as Raina said, it's incomplete right now. And we'll continue to move forward, but this is one of the pieces of the puzzle starting with Obama looking at what open data modeling is. And I'm gonna put in the chat another video we made about two weeks ago with a class we're doing in, in um, Kansas City on what open data means and how open data works and how all these systems, and this is where Kenneth fits in, how all these systems tie together. Um, and so this, is, this, this flyer was kind of the crux and if I go, to that QR code and I pull up that QR code, the Ray's grant logic model is um, rebuilds America's infrastructure sustainably and equitably. And so they're required to access this $1.4 trillion, trillion dollars to actually have an engagement plan. That's part of the requirement. And so we believe we have an engagement plan and that engagement plan includes um, methodologies of looking at affordable housing and homelessness, which really is the onus of HUD. And HUD is running Hacklin, Hacklin is running the Jordan Downs development. And so all of this links back to what does it mean to put two, $2 billion into a neighborhood and actually how much of the $2 billion should be to the people and the interests of the people that live in that neighborhood. And so we need to we need to really be diligent about bringing this message forward. And I was hopeful today with a recording like this and with some other representation, we could we could be part of this continuum that Andrew and Ramos and Brad have, have started up um, in in 2017 with with the formation of the United Hood Nation. So that's pretty much all I have. And then I think if anybody has any comments or anything, we can move forward. Um, I'd like to try to maybe, uh, you know, conclude in 15 minutes or something. If it needs to go a little bit longer, I think that's okay. But I think that's the big idea that we're trying to push forward today. I would definitely love to say something. All's in your court. Go. Man, first of all, again, thank you to everybody because everybody is a crucial piece to this whole thing. Um, I want to throw these, since it's being recorded, this first Universal Asiatic Black Man Congress of LA, Black Man and Woman, um, a platform that we all can live under and we have so much in common to go towards. Um, Missouri is very interesting to me because of that history in Tennessee and, and settlers that 
the black folks that came and settled the West. I'm very tied to that in Watts, uh, just for the record. Um, Grace Owens, born in 1918, my grandmother. And um, I'm saying this because LA is very near and dear to me. To me, if I'm from Chicago, that Chicago should be near and dear to me. But LA, um, looking through these notes and what to extract as words. I'm thinking about this Congress, the Continental Congress, of the United States, as we are creating a whole new reality um, towards a more perfect, I'll call it United States Black Union, is really what I see is happening. And, um, you know, so many years, of, um, Black folks haven't been included into America, and America is going through hell right now. It's catching a lot of problems. And so some are integrating, some are trying to break their own way. But the reality is we have to have these systems. And this is why I get so clear about the basic study manual. And I recognize that many have never taken that course. But I do know we have to have a almost like a membership, if you will, almost like a thing that unites us. And there's a lot of different groups and titles and everything. But to have an umbrella that I definitely know, as, as you brought up, Michael, Minister Tony and the nation and that piece, and it wasn't being recorded, but I went into, for those that were here, talking about the history of these black folks in the nation through Minister Farrakhan that jumped in with Scientology. I say jumped in. He said, I found something over here that belongs to us. He is very clear about focused on uniting our people, the Muslims and, and, and the planet. And he recognized, if I may say, that we're not gonna unite if we've got all this pain from the past that's stopping us from uniting. Long Beach, Compton, Watts, different cities. If you've got all these different divisions then we're talking about uniting, but everybody at the table um, looking in their own individual kind of way. So across the board, a basic study manual, Bloods, Crips, doesn't matter. Missouri, doesn't matter. There's words that we're going past we don't understand. And so what I know is, and with us organized with this, with Michael and so many others, LA, you know, I've got into this again with LA Trade Tech. That's when I came into the conversation about all these things that are in motion. And that's when I saw United Human Rights and I saw these different things that Scientology offered as I was introduced to it through the nation. And I'm just showing you the pureness of this evolution of thought and how we've had some great success collectively, individually, Dr. Shima, oh my gosh, the, the poor people's um campaign and Fred, so much comes to mind it's just not enough time to even articulate all of what we know has happened i thank you michael for that extensive email history and the documenting of all of this so the traction point right now i see is definitely that united Hood nation peace the anniversary event but from there introducing this basic study manual because what we've already done successfully from that has been the um the peace rides Nobody's going to argue that that's a bad thing. It's a great thing. But there's got to be some group, somebody has to hold in. Everyone needs a basic study manual because the school systems in LA have failed us. Can we agree on that? And, and a lot across the country. And so there's people passing that don't have an um, understanding of there's three barriers to learning, misunderstood words, too steep of a gradient, and the absence of mass on any subject. These are some basics that, like I grew up with phonics. And so I don't see that in the schools and I don't know what's going on out there, but, and then all the foster care and the drugging and, and the, the, the vaccinations, we have to find a, a quick, fast and a hurry implementation of a basic study manual to get people clearing up words and stuff. And so that does that. And as a group, if we push that along the way, all these details and, and getting more them on Scientology side, like having more reality with this conversation. Um, and so I appreciate you, Michael, for recognizing and understanding and appreciating. And I know the video that Andrew and I did, it, it did something to you to, to wake up and remember that there is a thing because the black folks in LA, which are to me are very similar to the black folks all across America and the world. And this is what I think is so brilliant about what you recognize, Michael. They came together with the game and Snoop. And it was the game. I mean, you know the story and Scientology documents this story I think better than anybody else does for the world to see. The rest of the world knows this story more than folks in LA know the story or in Missouri know the story because it's on their thing as they promote. They understand the public relations. They understand good, wealth, good works well publicized to shine their light. I'm not mad at them, but we have to shine our light. This has been my greatest thing is that 
all without the Dawoods and certain people in the conversations, we're not going anywhere because the history, Jackie, the history and what's going on. And that's where I'm all the way. It looks like Jackie left. But of all, um, my, my, again, my DNA, um, I've done some things with this thing, a group, Courage to Rebuild, that I created. There's a Janie Davis, y'all should know this, that donated $50,000. I say it loud and proud. That was some work. She did that to the IAS. She works with Kaiser. And there's a lot of other money that I understand is flowing. And there's, there's money, corporate money that was involved, I understand, with taking this course because of continuing education, a student hat course I'm being specific about. What I'm saying is um, they're, they're, the money's about, we know that, two, two billion. See, here's, here's the thing. I think we have a conversation, Michael and I talked yesterday with Andrew, that sometimes when we start talking about governors and whatnot, we're shooting too high. We haven't united enough yet way down here. So there will always be two billion, five billion. It'll never trickle down, <laughs> Reagan, to where it's supposed to trickle down to economics. It will never. So if we're not united, I'm excited about Bruce Beach. I'm excited about Colonel Allensworth, Kenneth Ryrie. I'm excited about Owens Valley, Biddy Mason. There's some traction points that the world knows we have to straighten some things out. But just throwing money at one family is not what we're looking at that's gonna solve the systemicness of what needs to happen. Um, and so we are the ones that have the answers collectively, you know, we have the whole answers. And what's so beautifully put together, Michael said two times he's put out this, I couldn't write fast enough, there's strategic something, and then the California Energy Commission. See, that blueprint of an idea of sustainable goals and everything that I've ever seen in an encounter think tank and what goes on, what has happened, and it's there. But the thing is organizing it. That's why I go back to that Continental Congress. I, why I go back to an understanding and an agreement um, within us, within each community. And this is what I love about the nation is that there's this understanding that the people, the core, there's individuals that have been done wrong a long time and they keep on doing the right thing. They keep believing, which we have to. But at the same time, you know, you fight with those that fight with you, but we're not coming in the spirit necessarily to fight. We're coming in the spirit to try the systems, to try and keep believing. You know, one of my hardest jobs is to get a lot of brothers and sisters in the streets to believe in the system of things. You know why? They want to throw away the whole thing, this generation coming up. The hell with all of it, man. They just want to start over, I guess, not knowing anything. They just want to start over. We have, I'm not saying we don't know anything as a people, but you understand, we have a lot to know and learn and understand. And so we got to get all of us, and I believe with this group we're talking right here, right now, the people will rally around and recognize this group represents us. Uh, and will every single voice get representation? That's, that's an age old thing. Of course, it's difficult. Democrat, Republican, the union, all the, oh man. But the reality is that the people I think are waking up to say, we need something else that's organized and better. And we can't just let all our babies just get vaccinated for those that don't want them vaccinated. Um, Andrew, go ahead, you're raising your hand, man. Let me stop it right there. Well, thank you so much. Just in the uh, interest of time, I know, Michael, you wanted to wrap this up in the next few moments. I didn't know if General Bray had a chance to, to chime back in or if there were other comments, but now would be that time. So I'm opening up. General Bray, are you there? Or um, any comments or questions from Brad or Brittany or Shima? Uh, is General Bray there? I, I would defer to him, but uh, uh, <clears throat> as stated in my intro, you know, we've all discussed this infinitum. We all know that we need a, uh, to virtualize our community action for planning, VCAP, uh, all the uh, asset-based community development approach, uh, all the asset mapping so we can build on our strengths and, uh, and then try and also uh, cover up our weaknesses. And so with that, uh, uh, you know, the common denominator is uh, the education uh, committees that we all have, basically, uh, particularly for this, uh, you know, STEAM squared uh, effort in these innovation centers uh, through uh, through HUD and these, uh, uh, and where we're going in the 21st century. So with that, uh, each one of these public and private pro partnerships that we uh, all have uh, relationships with, we can write the initial couldn't shouldn't be more than two or three pages really uh community engagement piece uh connected to uh justice 40 
and to uh, uh, and then do the community outreach ourselves, uh, particularly as a uh, uh, each one of us uh, uh, does best. So, you know, Remus already described the uh, the Peace Rise, the Peace Foundation. Um, the Church of Scientology has community centers in uh, uh, several urban areas throughout, not just the United States, but the world. Um, Nation of Islam is uh, uh, world renowned as well. And, and so is our uh, faith-based connections uh, with the uh, Church of uh, God in Christ, as well as the, uh, the, the Black Baptist ministers, as well as the Church of, of, of uh, the Methodist Church. Um, and then, of course, our access to uh, the community leaders, uh, you know, commonly known as Crips and Bloods. Uh, we can pull all those pieces together. In fact, we already have the outline for it for United Hood Nation or anybody else that wants to take the lead and, 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 and go for it. So now's the time to actually submit a two or three page proposal uh, to actually do the outreach and recruitment and tie uh, all the pieces together in a uh, uh, financial model and an operational model. That's my two cents. That's some valuable two cents. <laughs> More like a quarter for uh, for everybody on the net. Uh, Shima, I'm sorry to see you leave. Um, this this collaborative that everybody has started to try to get their hands around is a it's a full recognition of of several things. Uh, introduce Mark, yourself. Uh, introduce yourself uh, first. We have an audience that doesn't know who you are. Okay. Well, first of all, I uh, my apologies to all of you, but I'm. I'm actually in my yard doing working, and uh, yeah, yes, I do do that. And um, uh, for my mental, for my mental stability, as much as anything else. Uh, but uh, my name is Arnold Gordon Bray. I'm a retired uh, Brigadier General of the United States Army. Uh, I was an infantry airborne ranger. Uh, spent uh, 35 years, you know, I jokingly saying breaking things and killing people. But the reality is, is I was, uh, I was uh, one of those guys that would that would go through a door. But at the same time, it was always in, behind the principles and belief of the ideals outlined in our Constitution. To that end, I've shifted my focus from being a, a military arm for this nation to looking at trying to provide some of those opportunities and insights I've learned over 35 years over 56 countries and uh, 47 states to help uh, elevate and find opportunities for uh, what I call the U3D, the underserved, underrepresented, undervalued, and disenfranchised in our nation. And most of those, as you might suspect, are black and brown people. So I, I spend time doing that. And to that end, we have this thing called there are other veterans like myself, and, and fortunately, many of them are based or headquartered out of the housing and urban development. And that is, uh, that's almost the perfect storm because that arm of our government has a requirement to both identify the challenges of those in our nation who are most underrepresented. And those veterans that are involved, we call it's called the Veterans Affinity Group. Inside of that box, some of you know him uh, as Gerald Bennett. He's the president of the Veterans Affinity Group. Uh, and we have, we were taking the charter to reach out to all those veterans that are willing to be part of this coalition of the willing to help elevate our, uh, our undisturbed and all that U3D community. Specifically, we are the creators of what people call now the Envision Centers. We use the lines of effort to recognize there to change this nation, we better be holistic. And while the core of what we do, one leg, one leg and one leg only is education and STEM and STEM innovation and innovation and innovative networks to help drive that change is only one leg. I'll come back to the education piece because that's where VCAP resides. But we also better start thinking about, about character and leader development. That's leg number two. I think it's also a foundational element because 
It's within that piece that you find your character. You find who you are. A lot of people, by the way, would, would always tell me that those gang members don't get it. I said, bullshit. I said, the difference is, is that it's what you're wedded to that's important. I said, there are such brilliance in so many of the gang members that are out there. That's what the Nation of Islam has seen for years, for years. The difference is they try to get them on track and they use the, and they use the tool of religion and faith as part of it. And all of us can do that. That's where there's a, there's a natural place for character leader development to, to be created. The next leg is that is there's an aspirational piece. Financial literacy and wealth and wealth, because that's what will survive beyond you. If your character's right, you always put money in a proper place. It will never become the thing. It will become an enabler for what you're trying to do. It will also talk to you about career and career to, careers that fit you, that are comfortable to you, that will make you go from just trying to have a job to having a living and a life. But the enabler to being able to learn is health, wellness, mental and physical. Unfortunately, right now, in many of our communities, there are people, there are kids who are going to school hungry, going to school mentally unprepared, sometimes physically unprepared, we don't get it. So we better be able to, first of all, reach out and understand that part of whatever we do has to make sure that one, we understand who it is we're trying to educate. So then we go to that, that core pillar now, pillar number that pillar number one that I'm now going to call you the central pillar. And that is the one that talks about education because education will outlive, will outlive the times. VCAP is not about preparing anybody for a particular job. It's about making sure that kids understand holistically where they live, how they live, and more importantly, become involved in the development and looking at that environment to help shape how they live, how they get transported, how they are sustained. And then, oh, by the way, in that process, they will find a career sometimes that perhaps hasn't even been invented yet because they're gonna learn not what to think, but how to think. And so to that end, this is, this is what our innovation, this is what the collaborative efforts that I believe holistically all of us are trying to bring to these communities to bring for those who are proper to bring to those communities. Yeah, I say brain because I'm from the South, so you gotta forgive me. You know, <laughs> to bring to those to those locations so that one, we can get the kind of substantive, sustainable, holistic change that is essential for our communities. And by the way, part of this is making sure that we don't find it, you know, every community has that one, two or three kid that they love and everybody in the world stacks on top of that one kid and they do great and then people point to him as the example i think that's bs we we need to start looking at when we see that one kid we ought to see his whole sphere around him or her and we need to start trying to address those around them so that we influence them and if we get it right it'll become viral it'll become viral because we'll see the change. And, we're, and we can see that right now in some of the places with some of the kids that we are looking at. Kansas City uh, is, is a prime example. Richmond, uh, what we did in Hampton, you could see some of those kids where they, when they touch, when they got touched and we, and we showed concern about those who they touched to include their parents, we could see the change occurring. And that's the way we have to start thinking. And again, I've spoken much longer than you than you enabled me, but that's this is where the space that I'm living in, these are all of the things that I try to work through, through all of the, the various contexts I have and organizations to which I belong. It's about that kind of change, substantive, holistic, sustainable change. Well, thank you, Remus. I'd like to turn it over to you shortly. But two things, three things I'd like to say. One, <clears throat> the Department of Housing and Urban Development is our dog in the fight on a global scale with the UN Habitat, United Nations Habitat, and also our dog in the fight for the sustainable development goals here in the United States. For many years, we were forced 
<clears throat> to believe that the United Nations was a demonizing organization, and so we should have nothing to do with it. But the truth of the matter is, is that it does represent on a global scale, those countries and people around the earth that are aligned to have what Remus has referred to as this universal government of peace on earth. So I do want to share with you, General Bray, again, uh, this report that was done in 2021, that letter to Juneteenth that identifies the African-Americans, Hispanics, and mostly the indigenous people are the ones left furthest behind. We can have no conversation about the benefit to the black community until we understand our responsibility for our wider community. So I do wanna share that with you and also share with you that there's a 2016 through 2036 new urban agenda that's signed off by HUD that commits our activities in Jordan Downs in uh, all of the locations, not just in the United States, but in Puerto Rico and Samoa and Guam and those territories that causes us all to be united in our efforts. So I'm hoping that the veterans around the world who have been discharged, but are now living in other countries can also pick up the flag to help us solve these solutions here in the United States and worldwide. General Bray, the floor is back to you. Thank you very much. It, it, it's, this is exactly what the world is taught. There are two things going on. I, you know, I, I love the, I, I love just the, the, the thing that, that was getting to me is that, see, I was brought up under the one drop rule. Everybody knows it's the one drop rule. If you, if you got, if, if, if your great, 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 great granddaddy happened to have be, either been black or white, you therefore are black. And so we, 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 we attacked and moved forward in that sense. And while culturally, what African-Americans do is so influential from dress to dance to even linguistics, it is attractive and will dominate at whatever it is. I mean, I want you to look at the cars that we have even today. They'd have all been called pimped out. Now they come off the Lexus and Mercedes lines as options. Okay, that's right. That's that's how we have been influenced. Now, th then at the same time, I look at all these black basketball players. Seventy percent of the NBA, oh, and nine percent of the NBA is black. But I looked at the first five draft choices, and if I didn't, if I didn't see their hair fluffed out to to a fro. I have a hard time. Then when they go kiss their mom and dad, their mom and dads are one of one of each. And so I'm looking at this world, and this world has done exactly what's going to happen. The world is the world is rebrowning, and I'm going to say it like that: rebrowning, because we all know that we came. If if we believe Lucy, we all came black, or we all came out what the region demanded. And then as we did what we do, we changed out. So that kind of that kind of uh, of lack of demonizing by color, by race, is, is now shifting in different ways. We, we say indigenous people. If you ever notice in the DNA, when you, if you ever take that test, it doesn't really capture that demographic at all. You'll see, you'll see people who live on reservations coming up 1% Native American. So, that's why I said the real term, the one that matters now is what's your community done to both your brain and how are you being viewed? And that's usually where you become underserved, underrepresented, undervalued and disenfranchised. And for those who don't know me, just to put it in context, as a 10 year old, I drink from a separate water fountain. I always ask myself, what did my brain tell me about me at that time? What did society tell me about me at that time? I fortunately had a mother who never believed the hype. She never believed the hype. At 42 years old, she went to school and got her degree. And then with six children and no husband and the lights going off and on, almost like a light switch. But that was her, and that was her dream to change things. So it's important. So, so now if you look at what's happening here, when I look at these other demographics, I see, I see that we as a nation have to, have to let people identify themselves by whatever those demographics are. 
but the culture of those things are what is what has to be addressed and the people who buy into whatever those cultures are upon. And I even go to the, to, the, to the first thesis of that statement. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best, there was a promissory note that was written inside the Declaration and the Constitution. And he said, it was a, it was a canceled check. So, but, but there, but he, his death, the death of, the death of Malcolm X, Medgar Evers, and every time somebody dies, it's sort of like my faith says, when somebody dies, the impact becomes greater, especially with their commitment, because that's, that's their, given their full measure of devotion, that's what a soldier, I do, I've done as a soldier. I will give my full measure of devotion to make that change. So, so, so we, two things we have to always be careful of, of not doing. The first thing is, is that we cannot be in despair. We've always got to remain hopeful. We've always got to believe that there is an horizon across there and what and what the nation of Islam and the, uh, the, the Church of Scientology is trying to do is change the perception that the horizon isn't there. That's why that's why I, I am hopeful. Because the fact that we can cross those borders to say, how do we elevate and move that flock? of people of which many of us are from to see what we envision, to see what we envision because we know it's better. And we've got to choose that. Like I said, I don't think we have to choose a single path where I, I, my collective is Mandela, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. I think I've told you this before. That's my collective, that's my collective leader group because there's hope, there's a willingness to put aside what has beaten me down to move to another place. There's the reality that I'm fighting somebody who may think I'm passive, but in fact, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to move forward. And collectively, they make you stay off balance because you see they're moving forward. None of them are looking backwards. They're looking for what's next. And that's what we've got. That's what we've got to think. So we, when we see these labels and we see those kinds of things, we got to say, okay, that's I got it. There's labels out there. I can't, I can't be concerned about the label somebody put on me. I got to be concerned about the label of the community of the people that are around me to move forward. Some of the cases, see, and I and I love to make sure I always use the D after U three disenfranchised because sometimes that's the part that gets us in trouble where somebody is trying to keep me from doing what I want to do because they have assessed prematurely what my capabilities are and in this case what our capabilities are and so I, I while I acknowledge and recognize that there are some legitimacy in those labels I don't think we should be wedded to trying to figure out what they are. We ought to just look at the communities that we're trying to change because individuals out of all of those will do exceptional. We've got evidence of that. The communities in which they reside in large measure is where we've got to try to find the change. I hope that makes some sense to most people, but if not, I'll try to work harder. Great job. Great job. I don't know where Andrew is. And she's probably handling some other things, but I thank you for all you said. And I want to say um, to continue this conversation on this Saturday, anybody, uh, anyone in here, feel free to hit me as um, the Chef Rod. I'm bringing my group together, which all of you are part of that group. But, you know, to your point, General Bray, there's some military black man that I met, non-commissioned um officer highest ranking there's a title forgive me i don't know it. you probably know it better than i do but the highest non-commissioned title which i think it's six or seven stripes on the sleeve black man in science i just came across the dianetics why do i think that's such an important thing because everyone in here has been disenfranchised i believe for standing on truth and i think i love why you mandela malcolm and martin those three m's 
And so, um, but if we, we have each other's back, so, so th what's new to me is black veterans that embrace the nation and the church of Scientology. That is a new phenomenon. That I believe will change a whole lot of things and it is in motion. And no, there's a group of black Scientologists that just met with Dougie Fresh. Um, and so I, by being so close and involved with the nation, I, I mean, well, the nation, yeah, but within Scientology, when Minister Farrakhan said, I found something over here that belongs to us. History will speak about that. Did he sell the nation for $5 million? Did he lose his religion? Is he now trying to be a Scientologist to hell with Islam? None of that is true. He said, I have a religion, but, but our people dying for the lack of knowledge, all these information and stuff like that. And so, so understand that there's an idea of come together and, and you, met, you said it so beautifully in so many ways, but I just wanted to anchor that what I know is happening by sticking around. I promise you I, to some extent, I've been disenfranchised, but it, but it doesn't matter. We're all, you gotta keep pressing. You know what I'm saying? Because when it comes off of the beaten path, it kind of scares people, I've noticed, that, we, that they don't really know what it's going to say or do. It's not, but at the same time, there's a whole lot of that that will happen and is happening and identifying who's really an antisocial personality and who's not. You see, I believe that there'll be a time where white people will still be here long after white supremacy fades away. And you can marinate on those words because, you know, the systems is what I'm talking about. And we're all talking about it that have kept things down but it's hard to keep living creatures down it's hard to kill that human spirit i know you know what i mean to pray i mean but it's because that desire to want to live and tell the truth of the story is strong and that education piece to have a stable piece of data that will unite everything and everybody that and then from there to me there's basic training right uh general brain there's 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 a basics that you need to know whatever field you start to get into. So the basics of sustain, substantive, sustainable, holistic change, there's a manual waiting to be had, Michael Rendler and I talked about, that these are the verbiage, this is the collective verbiage that needs to be understood to have this conversation. And I believe that will be a foundation when we do get to whatever, however many years out when we solidify this universal government of peace where we all Thank can you. live in peace together. Um, Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you so much, problem. Remus. I do yes. appreciate that. I know, Michael, we were supposed to wrap up about 15 minutes ago, but we're mm -hmm. going to wrap up now. <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, this is streamed live on a Yagba network on Facebook group. I'll make sure you get the link for the chat contents. So I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this is, again, our sixth commemoration or the commemoration of the sixth annual launching of the United Hood Nation. All the members here are either indirectly or directly involved with that. And we look forward to working and networking with you going forward. Any closing thoughts? 30 seconds, now's that time. Thank you so much, Andrew. And I would like to see this also on the YouTube Andrew channel um, where the linkages ac across all of your efforts are. So recommendation. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> Just as long as soon as it's processed, it'll be up before uh, the day is out. Thank you so much. If Talk I can use my, my 30 seconds on this, Andrew, um, Michael and I spoke about, uh, we are working to set up, and Andrew, of course, a meeting with the right people within Scientology. Um, so stay tuned, everybody, to, to Andrew Networks, because I'm sure that's how you'll find out when and where that is, where we'll have some of them at the table, and we can really move this conversation further down the road. Uh, agreed, and, and, Gen and General Bray, you will be in that conversation just to let you know in advance. All right, we're going to call it a day. Thank you so much for being here. Again, this was launched in support of the United Hood Nation, among other things. This is that day. Have a good, wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Andrew.